if you are preparing for birth i'm sure you have imagined yourself giving birth and i would like to ask you where are you when you are giving birth and i'm not only talking about physically are you in the hospital are you in the midwifery lead unit are you at home but also where are you with your body like are you in a bed are you on the floor are you leaning on your partner or are you in the water if you've never considered giving birth or even laboring in the water while well, this video is for you we're going to see all the pros and cons and all the risks and benefits of laboring and birthing in the water let's go Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me already, my name is Ilenia and I'm a midwife. Today's video is all about water and using water as a form of pain relief for your labor and birth. Now this topic is huge and I know already that I have so much to say that I don't think a video will be enough. I'm pretty sure I'll do a second part as well because there is so much to say and I love this topic. So if you don't want to miss the second part, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss when the second part comes out because I don't know currently as I'm recording. Let's start. I know you have so many questions about water births and I agree with you because there is so much information out on water births, but the research is so conflictual and it's so yes and no or maybe perhaps i don't know and i don't have the answer to everything i just want to clearly talk to you about what i know and what are the evidence from the most recent recent studies when i do these videos i don't prepare much but i do pay attention into reading a few studies a few recent studies to make sure that everything i'm saying is evidence-based and it is Right, why would you choose to birth in the water? And trust me, you don't have to be a water person to labor a birth in the water. You'll feel if you need the water in labor, you'll crave the, the water in, in labor and birth if you, if you wanna use it. And the answer is because it helps you with the pain. I don't know, during your menstrual period, for example, if you use a water bottle or a warm shower, it just feels better. So imagine being submerged into a tub during labor with your belly covered, that should kind of be the level of the water. It will definitely help you to reduce the pain. The warm water relaxes your muscle, relaxes you, therefore you produce more oxytocin, therefore your contraction keeps going, therefore your dilatation keeps going, therefore your labor might be faster. I'm already telling you so many things about water births, but definitely what we know for sure from the studies is that the pain perception is definitely altered in a good way when you are in the water. So that's something very clear from the research. And therefore, something else that is quite clear from research studies is that the birth experience reported from women that have labor and birth in, in water is much higher. And no wonder why, like laboring in the water is, or birthing in the water is, is such a vibe. Water births are usually surrounded by people, by support people, by music, by candles, by aromatherapy. It's just so magical to labor and birth in the water that no wonder why women feel less pain in the water and therefore they're happier and they have a happier memory of their birth. Doesn't mean that births done on land are not happy or you don't have a nice memory of it, but just statistically speaking, birthing in water has a higher birth satisfaction rate than birthing on land. Let's keep talking about what's good about water births, but from now on, unfortunately, I can't tell you for sure that those things are evidence-based because the research doesn't know either. We don't know for sure. And I'm talking, for example, about length of labor. Some studies say that laboring in water shorten the duration of labor, and I, I, can, totally, <laughs> I can totally relate to that because, again, laboring in water produces more oxytocin because you're more relaxed and therefore your cervix dilates more and why not dilates faster but again sometimes it's not true it depends also depends when you go in the water and we'll talk more about that but some studies said that labor might be shorter especially the first stage of labor another pros that you definitely get with water bursts is that the rate of intervention is reduced from intervention i mean medical intervention that are not necessary, mind you. If there are emergencies or situations that require to interfere, intervene, 
the staff, especially midwife, I wouldn't say obstetricians are trained to do water birth, but they shouldn't really, midwife should, and they are, and they're able to face emergencies in, in water and, and they know when you have to get out so that you and your baby are safer. But for those interventions that are, are a little bit like questionable, in water you're definitely more protected by them. First of all, because you are in a closed environment and that it's harder for us midwife or doctors to access to you, again, in situations that are not necessary. Um, for example, it's impossible to do an episiotomy in water. Therefore, if there is the necessity of doing one, you need to get out. And therefore, all those episiotomies that are a little bit like, shall I do it, shall you have an episiotomy, shall you not, then you prevent them in water simply because you cannot do, it's impossible to reach, an, like, to reach the perineum and do an episiotomy in water, it's not even safe. Also, you're protecting from intervention like artificial rupture of membranes or oxytocin, you definitely cannot have an epidural. So all these medical interventions that can be good or bad are reduced in water. So pros and cons. It seems like there is a higher chance of vaginal delivery in water and no wonder why people are just left alone laboring. You get what I mean? Like people are just like left laboring undisturbed in water and therefore there is a higher chance of vaginal birth and less chance of cesarean section and an instrumental birth by forceps or vontus. For baby, in terms of benefits for babies, definitely it's, it's a calmer and gentle birth for baby because baby goes from an aquatic environment, baby is submerged and surrounded by water in the intrauterine life by the amniotic fluid and then he or she transitions to uh, another water environment and they are at the same temperature because our body temperature is around 36-37 degrees celsius and so is the water in the tub. That's why baby is born in the water usually take a little bit longer to catch the first breath and that's absolutely normal it might be a bit scary at the beginning but it's it's normal they just take a little bit more time to understand and realize that they're actually born and that's fine you may not be able to know if it is a baby that requires more help and if there is something going on otherwise it's just normal transition from the water to the earth are there cons for water birth yes for sure First of all, there is not enough research about it, as I was saying to you. There's not simply enough to say, yes, you can have a water birth, yes, you cannot. So that's also another, like some food for thoughts, because if they say no to you, why would they? Like, there is no enough research to say that twins deliveries cannot happen in the water or VBAC cannot happen in the water or anything else. I mean, like, why medium or high risk pregnancies are allowed or can have pharmacological pain relief and they cannot use something simple as the water. That's anyway, that's for another video, another topic. I'm going through a tangent right now. Um, what I want to say is that we cannot know for sure if some things are good for your situation or are not. Another thing that I would classify as a con for the water birth is that sometimes the tub is not available and this is because maybe your hospital doesn't have enough of them or maybe there is someone else using it or maybe it needs to be clean or maybe it needs to be filled and I know it might sound silly but these things take account when you are desperate for to jump into the water and the pool is not available and you have to think about what to do well you need to have more plants in your sleeve to use the um, same for when you're asking for an epidural, the nystitis might not be available, so but the pool might not. So just be aware that you might need to use other techniques in the meantime or if your hospital does not, unfortunately, offer you the possibility of a water birth. Another way for sure to have access to a water birth is by delivering in a midwife led unit. They most definitely will have more than one pool or at home, um, even more in your home tub or the midwife can bring um, into your house the inflatable tubs and that's absolutely the same. Another con, and I already mentioned that, is that you, have, you need to be low risk to be able, I hate to use the word, but you need to be low risk to have access to a water birth or laboring in the water even because that's another story. What I mean for low risk, your pregnancy needs to be a healthy pregnancy from a healthy person that has had minimal or no complications during their pregnancy and is a term, so between 37 to 42 weeks. 
mind you that being low risk might change even during your labor for example you have a fever during labor then you're not a candidate anymore to, for, uh, to have a water birth or maybe you have meconium in the water so maybe your blood pressure spikes or i don't know so many things can happen that might prevent you to use the water and if the midwife recommends that you don't use it again you can say no but be rational about it and by the think about the rationale behind the suggestion that they're doing sometimes they're absolutely right other times it's a bit more of wiggle area that you can use in your favor right i think this is plenty for the first part let's jump into the second part where we're going to see the cons for the baby point of view and also the criteria to go in the water and when it's best to go in the water if you've not done so already subscribe to the channel so you don't miss part two and i'll see you there bye bye